All right, this will be my last video for today because the goal of today was to get clean vector line art, right, of our spot illustration. And I have three files now in Adobe Illustrator. You only ever need to make one. But I'll show you the different ways. So this was the way where I brought in my hand inked lines, right, with the Sharpie on tracing paper. Then I scanned them into the computer at 600 pixels per inch. Right? Then I clean them up in Photoshop and then I brought that into Illustrator and I image traced it into this vector and then I would use the pencil tool to clean it up anywhere it looks kind of lumpy and weird. And I could spend quite a bit of time doing that but it would retain all the personality of my original sketch. So those of you hand inking, that's a good way to go. But you might get little lumps and bumps and bruises, which is not always a bad thing. Maybe you're going for kind of a woodblock kind of uh, style. There's all kinds of different styles of line art, right? For this, I'm going for something kind of clean. So I would need to clean all of those up for my own taste. And that would take a while. So another way I could do the digital inking was to ink it in Adobe Photoshop using the brush tool. And I did that. And then bring that PNG with the background turned off into Illustrator, which I did. And then vectorize it, which I did. And that tends to give you a really, really clean vector. I think it helps that you're going from Adobe program to Adobe program and you're not having to ever involve a scanner, right? So all of this is pretty clean and good. But if I wanted to skip those steps of bringing them into different programs, the last way I showed you, which is actually my preference as a professional, is to just work over the top of your sketch in Illustrator itself using this beautiful tool called the blob brush. The pencil is my favorite tool, but the blob brush, which is right above it, is a wonderful, wonderful digital inking tool. And the way it works is that you can double click on the blob brush, blob brush. you can set it to be pressure sensitive with your tablet, and then you set the variation you want in the size. So if I want it to be a little bit narrower for the inside of this, you can also set it like the pencil tool to be smoother. Then I can just draw these shapes. Nice and easy, and it will smooth it out for me. And the only places I might need to clean it are where they come together. So this is using the blob brush as a digital inking tool within Illustrator. Now the smoothing in Illustrator is a lot stronger than the smoothing in Photoshop. And sometimes it might change your drawings a little bit. So settings really matter. Like I'm gonna take the smoothing to the middle I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And then as I draw, it cleans it up, but it also makes it a little bit more accurate to what I'm drawing. All right. So now, what do I do to clean it up? I just go in with my pencil tool. I hold down command with the small selection tool to see the anchor points, and then I start on the path and I end on the path. Whoops, like magic scissors. in order to redraw these. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then this one, just really little tweaks. Man, that's really changing it. It's interesting. So I'm going to set it to be less smooth. Smooth is powerful. With my pencil tool. There we go. All right, and then we have to save it in the right way. So it's a vector. So what format are we going to save it in? .ai. We can do the working format, which is, yeah, AI. And then what else? Because we're going to want to bring it into Photoshop to add color. So what's the transferable vector format that goes into Photoshop? Ooh, I stumped you. It is EPS. Yep. So we're going to save it actually in three ways. Whenever we make a vector, it's a good idea to save it in all three formats, in AI, in SVG, and in EPS. You can do it on Photoshop, but then you'll need to bring it into Illustrator and image trace it. It's, it's a quick step, but, but I want you all to have vector line art. But taking it, having clean line art from Photoshop that you bring in as a PNG into Illustrator and you image trace it does a really good job as long as you remember to turn off the background color. All right, now I've got it. Now I'm going to turn off the sketch. Very important. And I make sure, just like we did for our logo, I make sure that there's no white in it, that it's all black shapes. And now I have clean vector line art. I can even hold down shift and make it bigger. Not that resolution really matters as long as it fits on the artboard. And if there are little tiny things I want to adjust, I can. But remember, this is an illustration, not a logo. So these super nitpicky details aren't as important. And yet, it doesn't mean you don't notice them. <laughs> and so I understand trying to fix them. All right, so we got to save this now. Our vector line art. I'm going to say file, save, first of all, on my computer always. And this is going to be my assignment five vector line art as an AI file. This is my working format if I want to keep working on those anchor points. Vector line art. That's what we're all working towards. with the default. <coughs> then I say file, save a copy, and I'm going to do EPS, Illustrator EPS. That is the type that is transferable to Photoshop. Keep all the defaults. And then lastly, just to have it, I'm going to save it as or save a copy as an SVG format. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. It's the oldest form of vector. And it it can be used in other vector programs. All right, none of these vectors can go into Canvas. So I'm going to set it up to go into Canvas. And I can close it now. And I only need one vector solution, right? So now, I'm going to take all those vector files, bless you, let's see, so I have the AI, I just have to hunt for them here, I have the SVG, I'm going to mark them all purple, and then the EPS, that really important one, that's the one that won't have an image, we'll just have a title. These three I'm going to put into my assignment four folder. That is my next requirement, but I need to put them in a way that can go onto Canvas. So what do I do? I open up Photoshop, and I'm going to open up a new file. We'll close these. Don't need these test files anymore. All right, and I'm going to say new file, and 
you know what I'm going to say. It needs to be, I'm actually going to make it larger than 8 by 10 because it's a vector. So I'm going to do it in inches, and we're getting ready for a poster. So I'm actually going to make it 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall, portrait format, at 350 pixels per inch at our studio resolution, 50 above minimum print resolution. Create that. Then I'm going to drag and drop, that's the only way to do it, my EPS, the one that doesn't have a preview image, on. And then it comes in as a smart object. I'm going to shrink it with option just a little bit so I can see the edges. And then hit return. Now it's a smart object, but it's a smart object from a vector. So it's perfectly clean at any resolution I choose. Then I'm going to lock it because I don't want to lose it. And then I'm going to turn off the background. <laughs> and now I'm going to save this. Save it as, just like we did our logos, Carl Assignment 5 Black Vector Line Art. And then what format do I need to save it in? First, a PSD, because that's how we're going to be coloring it. Then save it as a copy. And then if we don't want that background white to be in there, we want to save it as a PNG to put up to Canvas as our second requirement, just like we did our black logo and our color logo for the last vector assignment. So these get turned orange. This PNG gets turned orange and put into my folder. Woohoo. And then what's missing, which is going to be turned green, is my PSD. Here it is. Then all those other files I don't need to keep. The requirements are I need my sketch. I need vector line art. Here's my sketch. Here's my vector line art. Then I turn my vector line art into a high resolution Photoshop file. Turn off the background, save it as a PNG. That's what goes onto Canvas. Into the assignment. So I'm going to go to assignment five. Add to my sketch my second requirement now. And that's what we want before we start next class, is to have clean vector line art. And it's put onto Canvas as a PNG and if I say PNG, that means no background. There's no reason to, to save it as a PNG if you have a background behind it. So turn off that white background. And now I just drop it in. And you're going to see that I have really clean line art to add color to next class. And we're going to be learning all the different coloring techniques. And you can look ahead at them. through my slides, All right? So there's my clean line art. There is my sketch. Those are the first two requirements. Do, do, do. Now to add color, this is what's called duotone hard-edged color. But you could do flat color. You could do duotone hard-edged. You could do duotone soft-edged. You could do full spectrum. You could do full spectrum with color holds. We're going to learn how to do color separation eventually. We can add offsets. So to understand digital coloring, I have my exhaustive explanation slides with lots of, and this is past student work, even though it's fan art, right? Don't put fan art up on Redbubble. You'll get an immediate <laughs> cease and desist. Especially just like Disney. Yeah, especially Disney. But just any intellectual property that's not your own. But I can do this because of intellectual educational fair use, right? All right, so we have Wonder Woman. This is an example of flat color in your spot illustration. This would be an example of duotone hard edge added to your flat color. So you might get inspiration for how you want to color it at this. This is an example of full spectrum color. 
soft-edged.